All right. Very closely connected with that, in the same chapter of Exodus 23, verse 32, Exodus 23, 32, we come to another related problem. You shall make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. It is possible for people to enter into some kind of a covenant with people who have false gods. And if they do that, you become involved in the guilt of those people and their false gods. Now this may seem remote and abstract to you, but I'm going to specify one particular common case. Some of you may be offended, but I say this in love because I know it to be true. There is a very common covenant group, a secret society that prevails throughout the English-speaking world, which is Freemason. <coughs> and if you are involved in Freemasonry, you are under a curse. Not only you, but your family and your descendants. And I speak this from experience. Ruth and I have encountered this. We've dealt with it. We've come to the root of it. Freemasonry is a false religious system. Whatever you may say, it's not a secret. That's bluff. The main ceremonies of Freemasonry are known and have been published by people who are not Freemasons. To take simply one example, the Royal Arch Degree acknowledges a god whose name is Ja Bul On. J A B U L O N. Ja is short for Jehovah, Bull is short for Baal, and On is short for Osiris. And any system of worship that combines the true God with Baal and Osiris is abomination in the sight of the Lord, no matter who practices it even if it be an Anglican bishop or the Archbishop of Canterbury, who previously was a Freemason, not the present one. It makes no difference. God is no respecter of person. We have seen the most terrible consequences in lives and families because of this curse. I'll give you one brief dramatic example. In Australia, when we were last there, we had a healing service one morning and one of the people who came forward was a young woman who'd obviously been in the subculture but had apparently just come out of it and she had what appeared to be a little newborn baby in her arms. And we said, what do you need prayer for? She said, my baby. It looked about six days old. She told us it was six weeks old. We said, what's the problem? She said, it just won't take any nourishment. I can't get it to take more than a spoonful of milk. So Ruth and I laid hands on the woman as she was holding the baby in her arms. The power of God came on her and she went down on the floor and Ruth caught the baby out of her arms and held it. And then God gave Ruth a word of knowledge. She said, the girl's father is a Freemason. And the people who were ministering to the girl on the floor came against that spirit of Freemasonry. And it came out with a long, prolonged shriek. But the dramatic thing was, exactly the same shriek came out of the baby in Ruth's arms at the same time. Six hours later, the girl came back in the evening service with the little baby. And she said, I just want to tell you, between the morning and the evening, she's taken three full bottles. Thank God for that. But that little child would never have been healed if the curse of Freemasonry had not first been broken. Now, if there are any here tonight who are involved in Freemasonry, either directly, yourself, or through your husband, or father, or some other relative, I want to lead you in a prayer of renunciation. There may be other similar cults, 
Secret societies, satanic organizations, there are many of them in the world today. If you are involved in any of those things, I want to ask you now in the name of the Lord Jesus to renounce them. Could we please be quiet? Settle down. Thank you. Now, I'm not going to embarrass anybody individually. I'm just going to say a prayer. If you need to say it, you say it to God in your heart. All right? You say these words, Lord Jesus Christ, I want to serve you and to love you. If there is in my life or in my family the curse of Freemasonry or any other cult, I ask you to release me and forgive me and break its power over me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.